back at the Shoemaker Center. Cincinnati taking on St. Louis tonight. The Bearcats coming into the game 27 and 2 and ranked second in the country. St. Louis coming into the game 15 and 12. The Billikens a game under 500 in Conference USA fighting to get into the NCAA, or I beg your pardon, the NIT tournament. There are the seniors who are going to be honored tonight here at the Shoe. We also saw the student manager of the basketball team hugging Bob Huggins as Scott Wilhoyt came out with his parents, Phil and Peggy Wilhoyt, before the players are about to be announced. Now it's time for us to announce the voice of the Shoemaker Center, Doug Kidd. Though our next senior has been a Bearcat for only two seasons, he's been a key performer on both ends of the court. He became a factor from the time of his arrival last season, leading the team in scoring and rebounding and earning team most valuable player honors. His hard-nosed play and determination makes him a top perimeter defender. He has been a first-team all-conference pick and a candidate for All-American honors. Accompanied by his mom, May Michael, please honor number 32 from Rock Allen, Illinois, Pete Michael. His legacy will be his reputation as the ultimate winner between high school, junior college, and Division I ball. Pete Michaels' teams have 216 wins and 18 defeats. He won two national championships at the junior college level and hopes to get a third in about one month. Number 32, Pete Michael. Much of the play of our next senior is not documented in the game statistics. His steady presence around the basket has key the Cincinnati defense, while his rebounding skills have helped the Bearcats win most of the battle of the boards. A role player, his play on the court enables some of the other Bearcats to be more effective performers. He will complete his degree in criminal justice this spring, accompanied by his parents, Dwight and Shelia Stewart. Please honor number five, Jermaine Tate. If one word sums up his career, it is perseverance. Don't forget, Jermaine Tate missed nearly two full years with a heart ailment before playing for UC and had surgery on both knees before this season. Certainly an unsung hero on a great team, Jermaine Tate. Our next senior has contributed in a number of roles. He's been a starter and a sixth man. He has used his brute strength to rebound and play defense near the basket and has stepped outside to demonstrate his long distance shooting range. This former high school quarterback will be remembered for launching the pass which led to the winning basket in last season's victory over Duke. He will graduate with his degree in criminal justice at the end of the winter quarter, accompanied by his parents, Tony and Dixie Abston. Please honor number 24, Ryan Fletcher. shots in spectacular fashion has changed many an opponent's offense. He's been the Conference USA Defensive Player of the Year in each of the past two seasons and is a shoe-in for the award once again this year. He owns every UC shot blocking record. This season he's become an offensive force and ranks 17th on the career scoring list. An All-American and candidate for National Player of the Year. Accompanied by his mother, Lydia Moore, please honor number four, Kenyon Martin.
More like father and son than coach and player. That picture says a thousand words. Congratulations, Bearcat seniors. Best wishes for continued success. We'll be back with the starting lineups in just a moment on Fox 19. Welcome back to the shoe. We're going to have a brief delay before the start of tonight's ball game. St. Louis requested about a minute and a half to warm up since they knew there was going to be a lengthy delay for the senior night ceremony. So both teams are being given the opportunity to go back through the warm-ups. Kenyon Martin, however, remains on the UC bench with his head in a towel as he tries to get his uh, emotions in check. A very emotional night. Absolutely, and I, and I wouldn't be surprised if Kenyon started off very slow uh, tonight in this ball game because the, the emotions of senior night, especially when you've had the season that he's had, to, to have to leave this comfort zone is, is, is a tremendous emotional burden, and, and he's, he's dealing with it about as best as he can. I asked Kenyon yesterday if he thought he would cry tonight. He said he didn't know. Well, we certainly got our answer. Let's take a look at the A.E. Door starting lineups for tonight's game between St. Louis and Cincinnati. Number three, Justin Love, one of the top scorers in Conference USA. Third leading scorer in Conference USA, an outstanding player, can shoot the basketball, has great penetration skills, and a big-time rebounder from the guard slot. Bearcats will need to keep a body on him at all times. The Billikens coached by Lorenzo Romar, a relatively young man that you played against when he was with Athletes in Action. Absolutely. Lorenzo's a great, great guy, and, and Super Coach has had an outstanding season so far. And as you can see in Cincinnati's starting lineup, Steve Logan starts again in place of Pete Michael. The disciplinary action continues, although Pete is expected to play tonight. He obviously will not start. Well, the Bearcats have proven they can win with this lineup, and and, and they, they really got a chance to show some depth. Steve Logan can get the job done, has done it all season. And the Cats, of course, coached by Bob Huggins, his 11th year at UC, turning out to be perhaps his all-time best. Cincinnati at 27 and two. No UC team has ever won 30 games in a season. Cincinnati certainly has 30 and beyond in its sights this year. With tonight's victory, it takes them to 28, and then they, they hopefully will play three in a row at the Conference USA Tournament. So they'll go into the NCAA Tournament if they win four in a row uh, with a 31 and two ledger. That's pretty strong heading into March. Cincinnati could have 10 games left if they run the table in the conference and NCAA tournaments and could tie the all-time college basketball record of 37 wins in a season. We look again at Kenyon Martin's individual achievements. What a performance on Thursday against DePaul with 33 points, including 16 of Cincinnati's last 20 in the last eight minutes and 38 seconds. By the way, 16 minutes and eight minutes and 30, or 16 points rather, in eight minutes and 38 seconds computes to a 74 point game if he uh, had that kind of production throughout a 40 minute game. Well, I tell you, Kenyon will have the opportunity if he has a, a, a super game tonight to become the only player in Conference USA history. He's already become the only one to win the award, uh, Player of the Week award, five times in a season. But he could be the only one to win it six times in a season. And I don't see that being broken unless someone has just an outstanding season similar to what he's having. We'd like to take this opportunity to give you a VCR alert tonight. If you are a big UC basketball fan and want to preserve some memories of the four seniors playing in their final Shoemaker Center game tonight, we will pay tribute with pictures and music to seniors Ryan Fletcher, Jermaine Tate, Pete Michael, and Kenyon Martin in tonight's broadcast. In fact, we'll specifically tell you when to have the tape ready if you do not plan to tape the entire ball game tonight. We will, in all likelihood, pay tribute to Fletcher, Tate, and Michael at the beginning of the second half. So have that tape ready right around halftime. And then we will conclude our broadcast tonight with a video tribute to the Grand Canyon. Kenyon Martin, the leading shot blocker in Cincinnati history, and in all likelihood, the unanimous consensus National Player of the Year this year.
and that will unveil another award that he should get later in the broadcast. Is that right? Oh, absolutely. You have a surprise for us. Oh, yeah. The tears have dried as Kenyon Martin gets set to take the court. Tears have been replaced by the smile, and now he is trying to get the fans into it as we get set for the final game of the regular season between the Bearcats and Billikens. Kenyon set to jump against Chris Heinrich as Cincinnati tries to become the first team in Conference USA history to go undefeated in league play. The Bearcats have won 19 consecutive Conference USA games over the past couple of seasons. Kenyon Martin wins the tap, and we are underway. Bearcats in the home white. St. Louis in its road blue. St. Louis starting out man-to-man. -man. Bearcats immediately going down low to Kenyon Martin. Chris Heinrich overplaying him, knocks it out of bounds. Heinrich certainly has the muscle to match up with Kenyon, although Kenyon would have a big advantage in quickness and athletic ability. Heinrich gets a piece of that shot. Kenyon gets the offensive board, goes up again, and scores. And the Bearcats come out in a full court press. Well, Kenyon Martin delivers again. He's still hot from Thursday. <laughs> Heinrich converting the beautiful pass inside, ties the game at two. Well, that pass just over the outstretched arms of Tate gave a clear path to the basket for Heinrich. Martin guarded by Heinrich. Kenyon shoots. This one comes up short. Heinrich grabs the rebound in the corner before doing a gymnastic split. And Bearcats matching up in their man-to-man -man defense also. Going to try and force some turnovers for St. Louis with St. Louis has a negative turnover to assist, uh, assist the turnover margin. They usually do not win. Justin Love firing up his first shot tonight. It was no good. Love, by the way, being guarded by Kenny Satterfield with Pete Michael beginning the game on the bench. Tate is fouled by Matt Banyak. The first on the St. Louis Junior. Well, Tate makes a quick move to the middle. And I guess they got Banyak with the bump. We are tied at two, about a minute and a half into the game. Logan left open for three. And the rebound is pulled down by point guard Dave Ferguson. Ferguson was not starting earlier this year, but Marquis Perry, who had been the starting point guard, is done for the season with an ankle injury. Cincinnati traps Love. I beg your pardon, Maurice Jeffers, and Jeffers calls a timeout before turning the ball over. We'll take this opportunity to take a timeout. The score, Cincinnati 2 and St. Louis 2. This season, Provident Bank and the American Cancer Society have teamed up with the Bearcats and the Bob Huggins Foundation in the fight against cancer. Every time a Bearcat makes a free throw, Provident Bank donates $50 to the Bob Huggins Foundation in support of Coaches versus Cancer. The Billikens with the ball, the game tied at two. And Jeffers is forced to fire it deep into the backcourt to Ferguson. Cincinnati's really causing some problems for St. Louis so far in this game by trapping unexpectedly in the half court. Satterfield on Love, who averages better than 18 points a game. Now it's Ferguson for three. Heinrich with an offensive rebound. Tate tied him up, and Tate will be called for the foul. St. Louis doing an outstanding job of getting on the weak side and rebounding the basketball. The bad miss by Ferguson and Heinrich's right there in position and Tate gets himself caught up. Jeffers fake the three, takes it into the paint. Shot's a bit too strong. And it's knocked out of bounds by Cincinnati. Well, St. Louis really playing hard so far getting after the Bearcats, 
aggressive basketball, penetrating and rebounding. That's so far been the been what they've tried to accomplish. Perimeter-oriented basketball team. Love double team gets it back to Jeffers, who loses it out of bounds. The trap forces a turnover. I don't. I don't think they've really, really prepared for the Bearcats to trap unexpectedly the way they have. The fans showed great emotion prior to the game for the senior night ceremonies, but the shoe has gotten quiet since. Kenyon misses the turnaround. Justin Love hits the ball out of bounds, and Cincinnati will get another crack at it. Well, it's not surprising that Kenyon's jump shot is off right now in this game, an emotional senior night performance, or, or excuse me, uh, ovation and so forth is really, really, that really takes away your legs more than anything. Kenyon was held by Heinrich as Johnson tried to lob it into the low post. Heinrich picks up his first. And the Cats will inbound. Jermar Johnson open from the corner. And the rebound is pulled down by Ferguson. Ferguson pushing it up the court. The pass deflected by Logan and picked off by Tate. Satterfield slips. Traveling is called on St. Louis. A dangerous play right there is Satterfield who takes the ball behind his back and loses his footing and that's a way to pull your groin right there. Freshman lucky he's not, not coming up limp from that one. Kenny appears to be fine as he takes the handoff from Logan. Still tied at two. But more than three minutes into the game. Tate guarded by Banyak. Nice head fake. Shot's a bit too strong. Tate gets the offensive rebound and has his second shot rejected by Banyak. Now it's Justin Love right to the hoop. Kenyon might have been able to get a piece, but the offensive rebound is grabbed by Heinrich, and he gives St. Louis a 4-2 lead. Well, St. Louis getting out in transition, and Heinrich following up the miss from his teammate. The fans are starting to get into it, and the reason for the applause is that Pete Michael has moved to the scorer's table, along with Ryan Fletcher. Now the Bearcats crash the glass, and Kenny Satterfield scores. Kenny had nine rebounds against DePaul. Well, Kenny, Kenny can do a lot of things out there on the basketball court. Certainly can pass the basketball, but he gets himself in a position to rebound it also. Love knocks down the three. Faking the drive. And then falling away from Satterfield to score his first basket of the game. That was a big time shot right there. He shot the fade away from about 20 feet. Another foul called on St. Louis, and we have a timeout with 15.38 left in the first half. St. Louis leading Cincinnati 7-4. Cincinnati is not only trying to become the first team ever to go undefeated in Conference USA regular season play, the Bearcats are looking at moving back to number one in the ratings. As you can see on the main scoreboard here at the shoe, UCLA went to Stanford and knocked off the number one Cardinal, 94-93 in overtime. As a result, a Cincinnati win tonight here at the shoe would almost certainly move the Bearcats back to number one which Anthony Buford is not particularly happy about, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> Little added pressure in your opinion. Kenyon Martin taking it to the hoop. Nice move as Kenyon scores, and the Cats are back within one. Pretty soon Kenyon's gonna get his legs under him, and once the jump shot starts, starts falling. Good night, St. Louis. Steve Logan called for a foul in the backcourt. His first. Billikens on top by a point. About five minutes into the game. In all seriousness, why would you prefer Cincinnati was not number one in the polls? Well, maybe it doesn't matter this late in the season, but usually the, the team that goes into the tournament ranked number one doesn't fare too well. DePaul, of course, did make it to the championship game last year before losing to Connecticut.
Bearcats doing a good job of moving the basketball and having patience. Satterfield with an unbelievable dish to Fletch, who scores as he's fouled. How did he get it to Ryan Fletcher? That's Satterfield right there. That's, that's his ability to penetrate with the spin move. He's patient. He knew where Fletcher was rolling, and he dropped the pass off right on the money. Foul was on Bonyak, his second. And Fletch completes the three-point play. We have a substitute coming in for St. Louis as Justin Tatum checks in. And Bonyak will take a seat after picking up his second personal. Justin Tatum, the leading rebounder on this basketball team, a tenacious rebounder. Bearcats will certainly have to keep him off the glass. Trap doesn't work very well for Cincinnati as the Pelicans were able to break that fairly easily. Cincinnati leading by a deuce, 9-7. to seven. Jeffers guarded tightly by Michael. The shot is well short and rebounded by Kenyon Martin. Jermar Johnson slipped a bit. Court seems to be slippery. Pete Michael hits the deck. And St. Louis takes advantage. Martin nearly had a steal, and now Kenyon will be called for his first foul. Well, the intensity is there. Bearcats getting after the basketball, and Kenyon Martin comes in, commits a foul by reaching down. Both teams right now playing intense basketball, offensively and defensively, really getting after it. Troy Robertson has checked in for St. Louis. He had the ball before dishing to the left wing. Robertson, the younger brother of former Kansas star Ryan Robertson. Justin Love driving past Fletch. Dishes to Tatum. It's out of bounds, and it's off St. Louis. That right there was created by Ryan Fletcher as he switched out to guard Love on the perimeter. Love was able to beat him to the basket, but the Bearcats got into the paint, caused a turnover. Four turnovers for St. Louis, two for Cincinnati. Johnson guarded by Robertson. DJ with a big height advantage in that matchup. Pete Michael slips again, and the ball is thrown out of bounds, and the officials want a timeout to see if they can take care of uh, all the slipping and sliding that's going on on the court. Must be some condensation on the floor somewhere because Bearcats have slipped in three positions right there where they're cleaning it up, but down there on the post where Pete Michael slipped earlier and also at the free throw line where Satterfield slipped. As you see the skip pass, nice design play, but Pete just slips. Could be those new sneakers too. <laughs> You know, Michael Jordan started that trend of putting on new sneakers for, before every game. And if that court isn't dry, boy, those sneakers will give out in a hurry. I like the look of the sneakers that Pete Michael is debuting tonight, but they haven't been particularly effective. Yeah, in this game, traction is of the utmost importance. The, the worst thing that, that can happen, though, is, is with a slippery slippery floor, never mind the turnovers, the injuries that can result from slipping on the floor the way these guys have so far tonight. We're accustomed to seeing slipping and sliding like this if there were a hockey rink under the court, but that obviously is not the case at the shoe. Robertson for three. He is a great long-range shooter. That one was no good. And Fletch wins the battle for the board against Justin Tatum. Logan wide open for three. Fletch hustles to the corner to get the offensive rebound. Bearcats doing an outstanding job of getting to the offensive glass. So far not shooting the ball very well, but doing a good job of rebounding it. Tatum is going to be called for reaching in on Logan. Six foot seven junior Justin Tatum picks up his first. Tatum comes from out of nowhere and gets his hand in there and got the foul on the wrist. Kenny Satterfield comes back in. Pete Michael heads to the bench. 
And they're going to hand Pete Michael a new pair of sneakers. Assistant coach Dan Peters has a new pair ready. And Pete is beginning to unlace those good-looking but ineffective sneaks he had on. Kenny Satterfield slips and calls a timeout before he can be called for traveling. And when St. Louis was bringing the basketball up, one of their players slipped right here in the same spot. Now the officials are going to call over the Cincinnati coaching staff and try to get to the bottom of all this slipping and sliding. Athletic director Bob Gowen has left his seat and is now walking down to the court to see if he can get to the bottom of this. Yeah, while we have this break in the action, let's take this opportunity to check out the latest Conference USA standings. Cincinnati, of course, clinched the regular season championship some time ago with a 15-0 record in conference play. Louisville, with good play of late, has moved into the number two position and trying to get that second seed in the conference tournament. DePaul, at 9-7, and seven, is third in the American division. Marquette, fourth. St. Louis, fifth. UNC Charlotte brings up the rear in the stronger American division over in the National Division. South Florida in first, a game over 500. South Florida's at home tonight against Memphis. Tulane in second, then Southern Miss and UAB are tied. Memphis with a chance to move into that tie with the road game tonight. And Houston obviously will be the uh, lowest seed in the upcoming conference tournament with a 2-14 and 14 league mark. We'll take a break with 12.25 left in the first half. The score, Cincinnati 9, St. Louis 7. Oh, I'm popular now. It all changed pretty quickly. People just need to get to know the real me. It's a Saturday night, then. You just gotta know how to present yourself. Break out! Break away from the rest of the pack with the toughest trucks on the road. Break in a tough new F-150 now at 3.9% financing or $500 cash back. No one builds a better full-size truck than Ford F-Series. Come on, get tough. Get to your greatest Cincinnati Ford dealer today. For big projects in and around the home, it's the Fifth Third Bank Cincinnati Home and Garden Show presented by GMC. This year, enjoy a spectacular garden party featuring all new luscious gardens, hundreds of new garden and patio products for sale, building products, home furnishings, and this area's finest remodelers and landscapers. Don't miss the Fifth Third Bank Cincinnati Home and Garden Show presented by GMC at the Downtown Convention Center, March 11th through March 19th. Visit us at heartproductions.com. 12.25 left in the first half. Cincinnati leading St. Louis 9-7. We have just been notified that the court here at the Shoemaker Center was given a fresh coat of wax prior to the final regular season game. And apparently the person who did the waxing did his job too well. There has been so much slipping and sliding in the first seven and a half minutes of this game that the officials have stopped the game and had uh, the maintenance crew here at the shoe go over the court with mops and towels over the last several minutes. The lead official, Larry Ware, came over to our broadcast location to notify us that they were going to take two or three minutes to try and improve the court as much as they possibly can so that no one gets hurt. That's a great call right there by the officials because... Like I said, never mind the turnovers, it's the injuries that can result from so much slippage on the floor. The Bearcats approaching an unfound position. They've got 27 victories, got an opportunity to win 30 for the first time in, career, in, in, in this school's history. You could have beaten Michigan in the final four. They would have 30. So you had to go there. <laughs> and as we mentioned earlier, Cincinnati has a shot 
of tying the all-time NCAA record of 37 wins in a single season. Duke holds that record. If the Bearcats were to run the table from here on in, they would finish the season 37-2 and two with a national championship. Bob Huggins, now the nation's sixth winningest active coach. When the season began, he ranked ninth on the all-time list, and he has been knocking them off one by one as the season has progressed. He passed Nolan Richardson first, then John Chaney, then Lute Olson. He now ranks sixth among active coaches. The coaches ahead of him on that list include Roy Williams, Jerry Tarkanian, and Rick Majerus, just to name a few. We are set to resume action. The wax has been wiped. We'll see if the court has better traction. They should have got the buffers out, you know. That, that's really how you get rid of wax. Put the old buffer on the court. One look at my car will tell you that I know nothing about wax. Kenyon Martin shoots and scores. Kenyon has six of Cincinnati's 11 points. The Bearcats have opened up a four-point lead. Tatum drives in and out. And the foul will be called on Cincinnati. And in all likelihood, Ryan Fletcher. It is on Fletch. It is his first. Bob Hug is not happy with that call. We have an official's timeout now with 11.59 left in the half. The score, Cincinnati 11, St. Louis 7. away from the rest of the pack with the toughest trucks on the road. Break in a tough new F-150 now with 3.9% financing or $500 cash back. No one builds a better full-size truck than Ford F-Series. Come on, get tough. Get to your greatest Cincinnati Ford dealer today. This is Anthony, and these are a few of his college buddies. Mike does computer-aided drafting, and Pat knows everything there is to know about electronics. You see, Anthony's enrolled at Cincinnati State, which means that every other term, he's out there in the real world co-oping in one of over 600 area businesses. So, in addition to meeting a bunch of smart, motivated kids like himself at school, he's also meeting a few other people, like Pat here, the company president. Cincinnati State. It's college with connections. It's another day. There are new things to learn, new worlds to explore and conquer. Better get lunch first. Big brain for McDonald's. And at McDonald's, you can still do lunch for 99 cents. In fact, 99 cents will get you a delicious double cheeseburger every day. That's two all-beef patties with two slices of American cheese. It's great with an icy cold Coke and our world-famous fries. The 99-cent double cheeseburger. Have a nice day. Did somebody say McDonald's. Cincinnati with a 7-0 run, leads St. Louis 11-7 with about 12 minutes left in the first half. Game obviously moving very slowly tonight. First we had senior night ceremonies, then excessive wax on the court caused a delay. Well, it wasn't hot wax because both teams were stinking it up from the floor so far. <laughs> <laughs> Bonyak has come back into the game and as you might have noticed, Justin Tatum is having his calf looked at. I hope that's not a result of one of those slips when the court was still at its most slippery. Banyak shoots and banks it home. Matt Banyak, averaging about six points a game, has his first basket tonight. St. Louis is back within two. That was a nice bank shot right there by Banyak as he caught the pass rolling and kissed it right off the glass. Just watching the players make their cuts, it looks like the traction is much better. Pete Michaels shoots, it's in and out. Banyak has the rebound, and a foul will be called on Dermar Johnson going over the back trying to get an offensive rebound. Well, the Bearcats not shooting the basketball well as you see Pete Michael missing, and the freshman Dermar coming over the back. Shooting 33% from the field so far this half. Not getting it done. Big man Chris Brown has checked in for the first time for St. Louis. Now Kenyon Martin comes up with a steal, takes it right to the hole, and draws a foul. 
He was hip checked by Troy Robertson, who picks up his first. As you get a look at Kenyon's versatility, playing the middle of the zone, which is the toughest spot. He picks it off, and he's going coast to coast. Bob Huggins doesn't put a guy there unless he can read passes. He puts a guy there that has cornerback skills. That Kenyon Mark does have. Kenyon's free throw barely drew iron. Kenyon slightly below 70% this season. And it looks like he might have some wax on his fingertips. He's complaining to the officials that his hands have some sort of moisture on them, and I'm guessing maybe some, some wax off the ball even. Second free throw is good, so Kenyon has seven points, and the Bearcats lead it 12 to nine. That was an act. <laughs> to justify the near air ball? <laughs> yeah. That was spoken like someone who knows how to do that. Justin Love misses from three range, and Kenyon has the rebound. Kenyon with three boards to go with his seven points so far. Kenny Satterfield trying to dribble past John Redden, known as St. Louis's best ball defender. Martin drives and draws the foul. Oh, that was Martin right there. That was vintage Martin as he put his man in a triple threat, went right by him, and I thought he was going to finish that one off the glass, but he took the hit. Was unable to convert for a three-point play. Kenyon's free throw is good as Dave Ferguson comes back into the game for St. Louis. By the way, I wouldn't know nothing about that acting because I've never <laughs> shot a near air ball from the free throw line. <laughs> we might have to comb through game tapes to find out if that's true. That's out of bounds off Pete Michael as he tried to rebound the miss. Bob Huggins surprisingly pressing. And, and they've got, they're leaving a guy wide open under the basket. That guy is brown. He missed the layup. Looked like he got caught too far under the hoop and missed the layup. St. Louis is being given the ball, and that's why Bob Huggins is going bananas. He's saying that it was knocked out by the guy who missed the layup, Brown. Well, the Bearcats, they left him wide open down there, and DeMar forces him to hesitate, and then Brown blows the layup. There's a steal as DJ knocked it to Kenyon Martin, the feed to Pete Michael, and before Pete can get off the shot, Kenyon is called for knocking over John Redden. It'll be the second foul on Kenyon Martin. Well, Kenyon picked that one up, and he got the pump. He's rolling. That was a good charge taken right there by, by Redden. As Kenyon, a little out of control, not used to handling it, moving at that speed. Traveling called on Ferguson as the combination of Michael and Satterfield forces the turnover. Kenyon has gone out of the game. He's got eight points while St. Louis only has nine. This game has really gotten sloppy offensively. Both teams committing turnover. Michael takes it to the hoop and Pete Michael scores. Pete, of course, did not play against DePaul in the game before that. He was two for 11 against Louisville. And with Kenyon Martin on the bench with two fouls, Cincinnati could really use a good offensive performance by Pete Michael. There's turnover number nine on St. Louis as Robertson steps out of bounds. Press really bothering St. Louis. Pete Michael, as you get a look at Pete, getting in the offensive flow, doing his thing, going to the basket, switching hands and converting. So get another look at Pete going to the right hand, a natural left-hander, and he drops it in. The ambidextrous one. St. Louis calling the timeout after another turnover against the full court pressure. Let's talk about the press a little bit. It was one of the keys to the comeback against DePaul, although Kenyon's offense certainly was the biggest key, but the Bearcats haven't pressed all that often this season. Is it because Bob Huggins don't think that, doesn't think that this team is very good at it, or has he been saving it for late in the season? Well, I think he's really been saving it more than anything because 
he's had a lot of new guys that he had to integrate into his system and they've they've practiced it year round and and now's the time to unveil it because teams aren't really expecting it it gives them another weapon especially going into the ncaa tournament dangerous pass by michael dermar johnson made a nice catch in traffic and it was knocked out of bounds by redden tell you what with the athletes that he has and the aggression that they're playing with in that press makes it awfully difficult for other teams to score. Michael coming off the screen, gives it back to Satterfield. Cincinnati on top by six as Kenny shoots. Offensive rebound pulled down by the Bearcats. Count the bucket for Jermaine Tate. Great position on the backside by Tate. As you see the nice pull-up jumper by Satterfield. But Tate's in great position, two hands, strong rebound, and he takes the contact and converts. And the foul is on Banyak, who picks up his third. So Banyak will have to spend the rest of the half on the bench, nine minutes and 15 seconds to be exact. Tate cannot complete the three-point play. Jermar Johnson gets to the offensive rebound, and now he's fouled by John Redden. St. Louis is over the limit. Dermar Johnson will go to the line. St. Louis and Cincinnati have always had very physical basketball games. This one's no different. A lot of fouls, a lot of contact. Makes it really tough on an official on how much contact to allow because these teams are going to really bang and bounce against one another. Cincinnati crashing the offensive glass so far in this game as Dermar Johnson makes the first and will get another. The Bearcats won at St. Louis 79-64 and had 17 more rebounds than the Billikens in that first meeting. Well, the Billikens have, it, have held their own on the glass so far. The Bearcats only lead that rebounding edge by two. Lewis finally getting an opportunity to play some offense here. Heinrich goes toward the hoop, comes up a bit short, and the rebound is pulled down by Tate. Satterfield dribbles by Redden. Dermar Johnson slips. Ryan Fletcher gets the ball, and his feet are taken out from under him by Heinrich, who's called for the foul. Well, DeMar, he tried this patented crossover move. As you see, he gets the defender on his heels and whoop, he slips. Luckily, Fletcher was there to pick the ball up. The unfortunate foul committed right there by Heinrich. I tell you, at this point, if I'm Bob Huggins, I have two things in mind. Let's get out of here with a win and no injuries, the way, way guys are slipping and falling. Well, the interesting thing is, these guys are slipping on this end of the court. There hasn't been any slips on the on the defensive end of the court, which they will be going that way in the second half. And they'll have to deal with slippage playing defense, which is can be more dangerous because when you're sliding your feet, that's the time to you can really stretch your groin really badly. Cincinnati already has one injury to worry about. Leonard Stokes injured his ankle against DePaul and while he is in uniform it is not certain whether he will play he has not played yet Cats have opened up a 12 point lead nice look by Ferguson to Heinrich and the big guy slams it home Chris Heinrich who averages five points a game already has six tonight oh that was a great feed right there for Ferguson as he looked the defense off and dropped a nice dime Michael drives and draws the foul if it's on Heinrich, it's his third. If it's on Tatum, it'll be his second. Well, the foul trouble is racking up for the Billikens. The Bearcats are really attacking the glass offensively, and the Billikens not doing a great job of getting themselves in position. Therefore, they're reaching and picking up lots of fouls. Michael's first free throw is good. Pete has three points. Eleven team fouls for St. Louis so far. Six for Cincinnati. Michael hits them both. And the Bearcats are up 23-11. Well, 
looks like St. Louis has really settled down and they figured out how to break the pressure. Running their motion, swinging the basketball, and great defense by Pete Michael. Blocking the shot by Ferguson. Now Ferguson picks off the outlet by Fletcher. Ferguson shoots and drains the three-pointer. Ferguson deserved that one right there, working hard, getting back on defense to pick that pass off, and he drains the, the long-range bomb. St. Louis back within single digits, down by nine. Jermar Johnson shooting over the smaller Redden. The shot is no good. Tate gets to another offensive rebound. Oh, you got to go back to him. He's working hard defensively. Tatum picks off the cross-court pass and saves it to Ferguson. Tate doing an outstanding job on the offensive glass. Got to reward a guy when he works that hard. And the foul is on Kenny Satterfield. I checked that. Ryan Fletcher called for the foul, his second. Take a look at Tatum getting in the passing lane, dropping the pass off as he picked that lazy cross-court pass off from DeMar Johnson. Steve Logan back in for Cincinnati. And Donald Little will come into the game for the first time, replacing Fletch after Ryan picked up his second foul. Well, I think that DePaul came, that, that DePaul game showed Bob Huggins something. This bench, they stepped it up and played well, and they're getting into this game early. Tatum misses the free throw, and the rebound is batted out to Logan. How about B.J. Grove in the DePaul game? Solid play from B.J. He came in, gave him six points in the minutes that he played. Six minutes. It was solid. And, they, and you need that from your bench because you can't play... 35, 40 minutes, your starters can't play that those type of minutes when you're going to play two games in three days. Satterfield loses control of the dribble and commits the turnover. We have an official's timeout with 6.38 left in the half. Cincinnati up by nine, 23-14. Buford back at the shoe where Cincinnati leads St. Louis by nine points. Still 6.38 left in the first half. Judging by TV ratings, our national obsession seems to be watching if someone can win a million dollars. And we are going to give you that opportunity at halftime tonight. The Cincinnati Bell, any distance, million dollar shot is coming up at halftime. 47-year-old Bob Webling will have the opportunity to win a million bucks if he can make a shot from the three-quarter court mark. In other words, the opposite foul line. Again, that's coming up at halftime. Cincinnati comes up with another turnover. Logan with the left hand misses the shot. Little came flying in from out of the Raptors but couldn't get to the ball. Now Tatum lays it up and in. And St. Louis is back within seven. Well, Logan made a bad decision right there. He should have dropped it off to, to Satterfield, who was on the wing. But they really got too close and was unable to convert. And they turned into a four-on-one fast break the other way against Tate. Tate gets it into Pete Michael, who is really fighting for position. And Pete scores with a left hand inside. Six points for Pete. Cincinnati back on top by nine. Nice play right there by Pete. Redden gets his man in the air and draws the foul from Steve Logan. Logan becomes the third Bearcat to pick up his second foul of the first half. Bearcat number 22, Steve Logan, his second Well, the fouls are up and the shooting percentages are down. Cincinnati shooting 38% on 8 of 21 from the field, while St. Louis is shooting 37% on 7 of 19 from the field. So while it may be warm outside, it's certainly cold in here. <laughs> John Redden's free throw, no good. Jermar Johnson back in. Steve Logan heads to the bench with two fouls. You know, I talked earlier before the game with St. Louis coach Lorenzo Romar, and he said it'd be a tough, tough house to come in and play on senior night and get a victory because they so badly need one for the, for the conference tournament. But I told him, the emotional display the Bearcats will, will end up going through 
may give them an opportunity to stay close early in this game. In the first five minutes of this game, they were close. They just haven't, Cincinnati hasn't been able to break out and because they have, both teams are just shooting the basketball terribly from the floor. And no question, the Cats came out flat after senior night ceremonies. Another foul on St. Louis. Justin Love called for his first. Kenyon Martin's on the bench with two fouls. Scored eight early points before taking a seat. Pete's made all three of his free throws tonight and has seven points. Now the Australian, Andrew Latimer, checks into the game for St. Louis. Justin Tatum will take a seat. Well, that's one place that Cincinnati has shot the ball well, and that's the free throw line. Over 75% now with that last free throw, and conversely, St. Louis is at 25%. They are bad in all categories. Down by Dermar Johnson. That's how you run a break right there. Wings get wide, and let the man who can throw the pass throw the pass. Heinrich goes up strong, shoots it too strong, gets his own rebound, and feeds Jeffers. Maurice Jeffers scores his first basket of the game. Cincinnati's lead is 10. Kenyon Martin is going to check back in, even though he has two fouls. Bearcats running their offense called blockers. Guys just moving around, looking for the opening. Tate with a great move and a bad shot. That's knocked out of bounds by St. Louis. Kenyon Martin will come back in. And Jermaine Tate, I checked that, Donald Little will take a seat. Good minutes right there from Donald Little as he was able to stay on the glass, really working hard on the rebound and in. Knocked out of bounds by Jeffers. Before the game tonight, we gave you a VCR alert promising video tributes to the four seniors playing their final games at the shoe. The original plan was to do our tribute to Jermaine Tate, Pete Michael, and Ryan Fletcher at the beginning of the second half. Pete Michael draws the foul. But due to the length of the first half, we're going to get to that earlier than originally intended. So if you want to tape the video tribute to Michael, Tate, and Fletcher, you can go ahead and start rolling that tape fairly soon. And we'll get to that tribute right after the first half. Michael. Five for five from the line. As a matter of fact, when we have our next timeout and a TV timeout should be coming up after these free throws, we will have our video tribute. So roll the tape now if you'd like to have the video tribute to Michael Fletcher and Jermaine Tate. Michael, six for six from the line. He scored ten points, and Cincinnati leads by a dozen. Well, as we've mentioned, it is senior night at the shoe, and at this point, we present a video tribute to Ryan Fletcher, Jermaine Tate, and Pete Michael. There's Fletcher's first bucket as a collegiate. Fletcher for three in the first three quarters of this season. Nice move inside by, by Ryan Fletcher. 21 seconds left in the game. Fletch picks up the trash and dumps it home. Fletch goes baseline, blowing by Scott Johnson. Tate exploding to the hoop for the slam dunk. Off the feed from Kenyon Martin. Tate off the feed from Dermar. Johnson slams it home. Tate gets the offensive ah! rebound and slams it home. Michael fakes the 
three, takes it right to the hoop and throws it down. Another steal. Evan slam for Pete Michael. Pete slams it down. A quick outlet to Michael. Pete takes it in. He's grabbed by Wardle. Count the bucket. We'll save the best for last. We will have a video tribute to Kenyon Martin coming up at the end of this broadcast, so stay tuned for that. We still have three minutes and 54 seconds left in the first half with Cincinnati leading St. Louis 31-19. Well, looking at those things, those, that video clip, Ryan Fletcher's the only guy that shots jump shots. <laughs> <laughs> Latimer from the corner, the big Aussie misses. Jermar Johnson has the defensive board for UC. Bearcats are going to look inside to Pete Michaels. They feel he's got the advantage being guarded by Jeffers. Michael throws it into Tate. Ten on the shot clock. Satterfield penetrates, has his shot blocked. The shot clock down to two as St. Louis takes over possession of the ball. Outstanding defense that time by St. Louis as they prevented the penetration and then blocked the shot. And Maurice Jeffers knocks down the jump shot. He has four points. And Cincinnati leads the Billikens by ten. Johnson draws the foul, count the bucket. Jeffers called for the foul. And let's take a look at our Ford game summary. Well, both teams not shooting the basketball well, as you see right there. And 9 of 23 for both. But Cincinnati knocking down the free throws, that's really been the big difference here in the game. Jermar Johnson makes that free throw to complete the three-point play. He is three for three from the line. Pete Michael six for six. Cats are up by 13. Ferguson for three. Tatum fighting for the board. But he goes out of bounds with the ball, and Cincinnati will take over. Well, St. Louis all over the glass right there as the iron was unkind that time to Jeffers as he pulled up just couldn't get the roll Two fifteen left in the half Cincinnati up by 13 love nearly came up with a steal Dermar Johnson used his reach to get it back had a mild slip right there on the crossover too. Satterfield pulls up Jeffers has the rebound Ferguson to Love. High arcing shot. No good. Rebounded by Kenyon Martin. Five boards for Kmart. Love knocks it out of Dermar Johnson's hands. Cincinnati will still have the ball. Love playing really hard. That time just unfortunate bounce for him. Got the nice floater up there, but is unable to convert. Cincinnati having a difficult time converting themselves. Martin to Johnson. DJ sticks to three. He's in double figures with 10 points. Well, the, in the last meeting between these two teams, DeMar Johnson came out hot. Lit St. Louis up for 23. A lot from the perimeter. 10 second violation on St. Louis. Turnover number 11 in the first half. The Billikens have had as many as 29 turnovers in a game this season. Look at the skip pass from Kenyon Martin. He finds DeMar, and he gets that one off because he's six foot nine, and he bottoms it out. The lead is 16. 110 left in the half. Michael beats Kenyon. And Kenyon Martin's in double figures with 10 points. Well, that was a design lob right there for Kenyon, and Kenny missed him, but the second option is to bring it up top and feed Kenyon on the post-up. 
Ferguson with a bullet that goes out of bounds. St. Louis offensively has been on a roller coaster ride all season as we see Kenyon shot again. They have shot as well as 58% in a game, a victory over Missouri, and as poorly as 24% in a game when they scored 38 points against Marquette. You know what Coach Romar told me earlier today is that his his big guys have been used to staying in the, on the block and they are just now trying getting used to rotating out top and, and being a passer in the offense and it takes it takes some time to integrate a new offense. Satterfield drives, dishes to B.J. Grove, who hit the side of the board. Oh no, that was a big time block by Jeffers as he picked it. Jermar Johnson answers. D.J. wide open for three. Rebound is hauled down by Tatum, who gets rid of it to Jeffers. Ten seconds left in the half. Jeffers shoots. Rebounded by Michael with six seconds left in the half, and he is fouled by Maurice Jeffers, who picks up his third. Well, Maurice Jeffers took a bad shot right there with ten seconds to go in the game. You back it out, you try and get one. This time, he takes the jump shot, and now Cincinnati gets two free throws with the clock stopped. Michael steps to the line. Pete has 10 points. One of three Bearcats in double figures in the first half. He has 10. Kenyon has 10. Dermar Johnson has 10. Make it 11 for Pete Michael, who came into the game making 72% of his free throws. Robertson back in. Jeffers heads to the bench with three fouls. B.J. Grove checks out. Bob Huggins stops him before B.J. takes a seat. Michael, 8 for 8 from the line in the first half. Cincinnati leads by 20. St. Louis gets off the shot, comes up empty with an air ball, and the longest half in history is over. Cincinnati scoring the last 10 points to take a 20-point lead to the locker room. What an emotional beginning to this basketball game. Few bad shooting by both teams. The Cincinnati Bell, any distance, million-dollar shot. Coming up shortly, our halftime score, Cincinnati 41, St. Louis 21. University of Cincinnati Bearcat basketball is... Okay. At the half, Cincinnati leads by 20. Our halftime score, as you see, the Bearcats 41, the Billikens 21. This obviously is the final game of the regular season. Oddly enough, Cincinnati's next game could very well be against St. Louis, in all likelihood based on the conference tournament seating. St. Louis will take on Southern Miss on Wednesday, and the winner of that game will take on Cincinnati on Thursday. And it, this right now is an opportunity for them to to try and find some weaknesses in the Cincinnati defense so that they can hopefully have an out, a, a good outcome in the tournament. Well, as promised, we are going to have an opportunity to see someone take a shot for $1 million. Here again is the voice of the Shoemaker Center, Doug Kidd. Joining us on the court right now is someone who took advantage of Cincinnati Bell's any distance service and now has a chance to win one million dollars. Cincinnati Bell launched the Any Distance program last month offering Cincinnati Bell customers 30 minutes of free long distance every single month. To get your free 30 minutes, just sign the card that you found on your seat or call 565-F-R-E-E. -E. That would be 565-FREE. Bob Webling is gonna have a shot for one million dollars now, Bob, you only get one shot. You cannot go across the three-point line. If you do that, I get the money. It's okay? So you ready to go? A little nervous? What are you going to do with $1 million? After my 10%, thank you very much. All right, guys, he's got one shot for $1 million. Here he goes. Let's help him out. Give him a little round of applause. Get him going. Oh, 
short. Uh, but we would congratulate him anyway. Good try by Bob Webling, but he will not be one million dollars richer tonight. Again, our halftime score: Cincinnati 41, St. Louis 21. It works. Fast-paced kung fu action in the Defender Sunday at noon on Fox 19. The Cats trying to complete a perfect Conference USA regular season. Lead St. Louis by 20 at halftime. Dan Horton, Anthony Buford back at the shoe. The first half featuring Kenyon Martin's tears, excessive wax on the court, <laughs> and some bad shooting by both teams. Absolutely. The, the emotion from the senior moment just produced some bad shooting. Let's take a look at first half highlights. Kenyon Martin, after drying the tears, got off to a decent start offensively. Well, the turnaround jumper has been a staple in his game, and he shows it right there. He went to the bench, though, after picking up two fouls, and Pete Michael had to take over. Uh, Pete Michael working hard inside, going to his strong hand and taking the contact. Both of those scores in double figures, so is freshman Dermar Johnson. Well, as you see, St. Louis loses the basketball and out break the Cats. Jamar Johnson with the strong finish. As we check out the American Family Insurance halftime stats, free throw shooting is the difference in this game. Absolutely. Cincinnati shooting 84% from the free throw line. But how about the 24 to 16 rebounding edge? Cincinnati dominating the Billikens on the boards just as they did in St. Louis. Individually, Pete Michael leads all scorers with a dozen. Chris Heinrich with six for St. Louis. Justin Love, averaging 18 a game, only has three points. Our halftime score, the Bearcats 41, the Billikens 21. Cats on a pace to score 82 points despite poor shooting from the floor. Cincinnati at 39% so far. St. Louis at 32%. And our man Bob Webling, 0 for 1 for a million bucks. I understand that Bob had a tape measure at his house and tried to walk off the distance of 71 feet to practice for the million dollar shot. It turned out he didn't have enough room in his yard. And unfortunately for Bob, it showed in that $10 million dollar shot. Well, the slippage continues as St. Louis turns the ball over as a player hits the deck. They'll work on that waxy spot. Wow, somebody needs to clean their ears, man. <laughs> Wax that's on the floor. <laughs> That was downright gross. <laughs> Bearcats spreading the floor, getting a lot of movement. Trying to open this game up. Get some better looks at the basket and improve that shooting percentage. Cincinnati up by 20. Kenyon tried to fire it into a cutting Kenny Satterfield. It was picked off by Ferguson. And Justin Love misses the layup. And the battle for the board is won by Pete Michael. Gets rid of it to Satterfield. Kenny gets it back to Pete, and Michael scores. 14 for Pete to lead all scores. Well, Justin Love had a bout with a little bit of intimidation right there as Kenyon affected that layup attempt. Another near turnover, and there is the turnover as Tate picks it off. Satterfield will direct the offense with the Cats up by 22. Plenty of time on the shot clock. 13 seconds as Kenyon shoots. It's in and out and rebounded by Jeffers. Jeffers playing with three fouls. So is Bonyak. Bonyak picked up three fouls in eight minutes. Ferguson adjusts the arc, misses the shot. Tate has the rebound. Tate runs into traffic. His shot is no good and rebounded by Jeffers. Slappy transition play by Cincinnati. And just abysmal offense. 
from St. Louis. Not a very entertaining game so far. Seems like both teams have been in slow motion in this game. There's another interception. The three on four break. Bad numbers for the Cats, so they back it out. That was turnover number 14 for St. Louis. Kenyon drives and draws another foul. Number four on Banyak. Banyak was part of a very highly touted recruiting class when Charlie Spoonauer was the head coach at St. Louis. He came in along with Larry Hughes, but Hughes, of course, only lasted one year. And with the departure of Hughes, that recruiting class became very, very uh, underrated. <laughs> because Banyak is solid, but not a great group without Larry Hughes. Absolutely. And, and Banyak, more than any of them, has suffered with the loss of, of Hughes. Michael called for a foul in the backcourt. Applying pressure to Jeffers. It's the first on Pete. Well, we really haven't addressed in much depth Pete's one-game suspension at DePaul. Banyak shoots and scores. Matt Banyak with his second basket of the game. Bob Huggins, of course, has only publicly said it was a coach's decision. And the Cincinnati coaching staff is really not getting into any great detail on what Pete did leading to that one-game suspension. Prior to the game tonight, a press release was issued stating that Michael would play tonight but would not start because he was not, quote, completing academic responsibilities in a timely manner. Kenyon Martin with a nice looking shot is up to 14 points and the Cats lead by 24. We can say this about Pete Michael, I think. Although the team is having a great season, and in many respects, he's had a fine year. Love hitting from three-point range. It hasn't been individually the year Pete Michael was hoping to have. Absolutely, and I, and I think over the last maybe seven or eight games, Pete has really not played to his expectations, and he's built up frustration due to that. Love again. Does not get the roll. Kenyon has the rebound. This much is certain as Satterfield draws another foul. The Bearcats cannot realize their ultimate goal of winning the school's third national championship without a big contribution from Pete Michael in the NCAA tourney. We have a timeout with 15.59 left in the ball game. Cincinnati up by 23. Are you coming on? Welcome back to the shoe where Cincinnati leads St. Louis 49-26. Dan Orton, Anthony Buford, delighted to have you watching the game here on Fox 19. Hasn't been the most entertaining game that we've had the opportunity to broadcast this season, but certainly looks like it's going to be Cincinnati's 28th win. Absolutely, and, and St. Louis is a much better basketball club than what they're showing here this evening. I hope Cincinnati doesn't take them for granted should they meet in the Conference USA Tournament. Conference tournament gets underway on Wednesday in Memphis at the Pyramid. Cincinnati will not play until Thursday, and you can see Cincinnati's game on Thursday and in all likelihood another game on Friday right here on Fox 19. Pete Michael shoots and scores. Pretty shot by Pete, who has 16 points. Well, Cincinnati probably designed something to work against a man-to-man, -man, and St. Louis switched up to his own defense. Banyak, in and out, rebounded by Jermaine Tate. Michael into traffic, scores! Whoa, how'd he get that into the hoop? Yeah, that was a tough shot right there. He converted that through three defenders. And I never saw the release. As you take a look at Pete working against the shot clock, gets the quick lefty to go. 
You take a look at Pete coming right in your living room. He takes the contact, takes on three guys, and finishes with the right hand. Certainly missed that kind of play for Pete over the last five or six games. 18 points on five of seven field goal shooting and eight for eight free throw shooting. For senior Pete Michael playing his final game at the shoe. Banyak dumps it down to Heinrich, who's blocked by Pete Michael. Saved by St. Louis. Love double teamed, and he gets rid of it to John Redden. Banyak will dunk. Six points for junior Matt Banyak, who is from St. Louis. In fact, as a high school player in St. Louis, he broke Steve Stepanovich's all-time records at DeSmet High School. Did you ever play against that big stiff? <laughs> no. At least in his NBA career. He's a pretty good college player. So take a look at Banyak. Finishes strong. Heinrich limping as he heads to the bench, and it looks like he might have twisted his left ankle. Well, St. Louis, they, they may have finished that, that possession off with an easy dunk, but that possession was an adventure. Ball was everywhere, Bearcats trapping, and, and they, they really haven't handled the execution of their offense very well. It's just been tough scoring. Nice catch by Michael, and Pete draws the foul. John Redden, guilty of the shove, it's his second foul. Well, this play is designed for Pete to post up, and he posts very deep, and then he gets shoved below the belt. That's the first miss from the line for Pete. He was eight for eight on the opposite hoop from the foul line. Kenyon Martin back in. Jermaine Tate will rest. Michael with three blocks in this game. And 19 points. Bearcats setting up in the pressure. Pete Michael with the steal. It's a three on two fast break. And John Redden saw the pass coming from Logan and knocked it out of bounds. As Logan would have had a little bit more patience right there. Satterfield was getting ready to back cut. As you take a look at Pete Michael getting in there in the passing lane. And Great move by Pete. A rare miss in this game. And it's rebounded by St. Louis. Ferguson for three. Michael gets position on Brown to pull down the rebound. Nice look by Logan. Fletcher might have had that one tipped. Satterfield puts it back up. Brown gets the rebound, swings his elbows, and nearly loses it to Satterfield. But <laughs> Satterfield's like a net. Harassment. Kenyon Martin with a rejection. But it goes to Love. His shot is no good. Fletcher has the rebound, and this flurry brings the Shoemaker Center crowd to life. Michael lays it in, and Pete has 21 points. Timeout, St. Louis. Wow, what a sequence right there. Both teams getting up and down the floor. Bearcats making things happen. We'll take a look at the block for Kenya Martin. The St. Louis thought they had an easy fast break basket. As Ferguson goes strong and Kenyon just bats it out of there. Big fella going up strong and the fast break leads to Pete Michael with the finish. Kenyon Martin's school record, 105th block this season. Kenyon, of course, the all-time leader at UC. And he has the three best single-season marks. 105 this year, 83 his sophomore year, 78 last year, 290 career blocks. Ferguson slips. Pete Michael winds up with the ball. Fletch backing in Banyak. 
Banyak with the block. Pulled down by Ferguson. Solid defense right there by Banyak. Didn't let Fletcher go with the spin move. Redden's pass for Ferguson. Off his fingertips and out of bounds. Turnover number 17 committed by St. Louis. Dermar Johnson comes in. Pete Michael heads to the bench. A big round of applause for Pete from the fans here at the shoe, and it's good to see a smile on his face. He hasn't been smiling much of late. Played very well tonight with 21 points. You can tell Pete, Pete's really been battling, though, through the knees, through his knee problems, because he normally explodes to the basket and dunks. Kenyon for three. The shot is no good. Rebounded by Love. Up court to Ferguson. Now it's Love. Being able to tip it to twine from deep is so enticing. And Kenyon Martin, he loves that feeling of knocking down the 20-footer. Near steal for Satterfield. St. Louis will have the ball with 19 left on the shot clock. Pete hitting his first career three-pointer at DePaul on Thursday. And he probably enjoyed that feeling so much that he's launched up two more in a hurry. Making him one for nine in his career from three-point range. <laughs> he is actually a poorer career three-point shooter than his teammate, Jermaine Tate, who is one for five in his career. The long outlet to Satterfield, and he throws it down. Satterfield showing some spring. The little fella rising to the occasion. Cincinnati by 30. Brown, back to Banyak, who knocks down the jump shot. It's a two-point basket for Matt Banyak. Cincinnati will face the winner of the Southern Miss-St. Louis game in its opening Conference USA tournament game. That has been determined. Kenyon Martin slams it home and draws the foul. Wow, that's just brute strength. Just brute strength as you see Kenyon take it in strong, take on the whole St. Louis basketball team and dunk all of them in the basket. The big fella goes strong to the right. As Kenyon gets set to try and complete the three-point play, we can also tell you this. Make your plans for noon on Thursday. Cincinnati will play the noon game on Thursday in the Conference USA Tourney. Kenyon completes the three-point play, and Cincinnati leads by 31. We have a timeout, 11.05 left in the ball game. Welcome back to the shoe, Cincinnati 61, St. Louis 30. Kenyon Martin will certainly be a lottery pick in the upcoming NBA draft. Kenyon honored five times so far this year as the Conference USA Player of the Week, and he's certainly going to be one of the top choices for the week that's about to end after having that unbelievable game at DePaul on Thursday. Five times honored is already a Conference USA record. I'll give you a little interesting trivia fact about five Player of the Week awards for Kenyon Martin in just a moment. Logan feeding Fletch. Fletch nearly lost it. Eight left on the shot clock. Logan from deep. Got it. That's the first basket of the game for Steve Logan. <laughs> and he shot that one like like it was nobody's business. And, you know, it made it look like could have just done that at the beginning of the possession. That's out of bounds off UC. Let's see that tray by Logan. Well, he's out there really deep, and he just raises up, throws his hands down by his side like, I can do that anytime <laughs> I want to. Steve, the Cats' best three-point shooter this season at 43%. Cincinnati by 34 with 10 minutes to go. 
Troy Robertson tied up by Kenyon. And now Satterfield. And Troy Robertson calls timeout. Did he call it in time? That's what the officials are conferring about. Yes. St. Louis gets credit for the timeout before Robertson turns it over. Well, Robertson goes into no man's land and picks up his dribble. And that should have been either a tie-up or a travel unless he was screaming timeout. And we just couldn't hear him because it got pretty loud. There's only four seconds on the shot clock. Well, let's get to that little trivia thought on Kenyon Martin being a five-time Conference USA Player of the Week this year. He's actually one of three players this year in, conference, in uh, college basketball who has been Player of the Week in his conference five times. The others are Troy Murphy of Notre Dame, who's been the Big East Player of the Week five times this year. And the third is Craig Speedy Claxton of Hofstra, who's been the American East Player of the Week five times this year. Heinrich with the offensive rebound and the stick pad. You promised before this game you had another Kenyon Martin award for us. Well, I think really Kenyon ought to be rewarded with his number being retired. I don't think anyone should wear number four again at this university. Mm. Kenyon scores. Is mom loving it? That's Lydia Moore, Kenyon's mom, next to his fiance, Fatima. So we take a look at Kenyon working in the post. Takes the hit, and still with the soft touch, he'll shoot one. Kenyon with 19 points. Make it 20. Kenyon's been averaging 26 points a game over his last seven. 26 points and 13 boards over the last seven games. Simply dominating. Here's a steal. Make it a near steal as Kenyon was airborne. Well, Kenyon was watching that one from under the basket, and he took off. I almost got there in time. Pete Michael will check back in for UC. It's like Pete had some ice packs on his knees while he sat out a few minutes, but he does come back into the game. Take a look. Another slip on the side. That time by Maurice Jeffers. Officials will attend to that slipping problem. Make sure University of Cincinnati tries to take care of that corner. Players have been slipping over there all evening. Well, what do you think? Do you think Kenyon's uh, jersey ought to be retired? I think that's a tremendous suggestion, especially if he gets his degree. Kenyon is a few credits away, but says he hopes to come back in summers after uh, going to the NBA to get his degree largely because he'd like to do that for his mom, Lydia Moore. And uh, I think, especially if he were to do that, that number four belongs up on the wall next to Oscar Robertson's number 12 and Jack Twyman's number 27. Absolutely, and, and you know the one thing that, that he will certainly be packing with him should be three Player of the Year awards, and that hasn't been achieved here in a very long time. So I, I would think that that certainly warrants, along with this season and his career here, and, and as you suggested, once he gets his degree, that warrants the number four going up on the wall. There are the two retired jerseys in men's basketball. They goes 12, Jack Time Twyman's 27, Cheryl Cook's 24, been retired in the women's basketball program. And the number 12 was also retired in the baseball program recently for former baseball and basketball coach Ed Jucker. Nine eleven left. Cincinnati up 67-32. Don't forget at the end of the broadcast, I have a video tribute to the Grand Canyon.
He has 20 points thus far in his final game at the shoot. 20 points and six boards for Kenyon Martin. Nice give and go sequence, but Logan could not convert. Here comes St. Louis and John Redden. And Jeffers throws an awful pass that goes out of bounds for turnover number 20 for SLU. It's tough to win in any building when you turn the basketball over 21 times, actually, uh, and shoot 33% from the field. It's just it's tough. It's tough to do when you only have 14 field goals and 21 turnovers. Logan. Drops in another jump shot. He has five points. The lead is 37. Heinrich with a nice pass. Tatum misses from point blank range, and Kenyon pulls down rebound number seven. Michael had that pass deflected out of his hands. A little more than eight minutes to go. Michael with a steal, or at least a deflection to Dermar Johnson. DJ penetrates. And the foul is called on St. Louis. It is on Troy Robertson. His second. We have an official's timeout with 7.59 left. It's Cincinnati 69, St. Louis 32. If you missed the news earlier, number one ranked Stanford lost on its home court today, 94-93 in overtime to UCLA. So the Bearcats are likely to move back to number one in the polls after this victory over St. Louis. What a great sign on the facing of the upper deck at the shoe. Thanks for number four staying, obviously in honor of Kenyon Martin, who came back for his senior year and made himself several million dollars by doing so. Dermar Johnson hits from three-point range. 13 for DJ. The lead is 40. Well, Cincinnati's really shot the ball well here in the second half. They brought their field goal percentage up to 47% and 43% from three-point land. So that really is what spurred this big lead. Jermaine Tate will be called for the foul, trying to steal it from Jeffers. Number two on Tate. Tate gets. Brian Fletcher back in. Jermar Johnson on the bench. All four seniors are on the court for Cincinnati. And as this game winds down, Bob Huggins can take the opportunity to remove them one at a time for a final round of applause here at the shoe. Fletch called for blocking, did not draw the charge, which has certainly been a specialty of his in his four-plus years at Cincinnati. Heinrich drops the shoulder strong. That's a big man. That's a big man he's knocking over. Third foul on Fletch. That foul will be called on Kenyon Martin. It'll be his third. Kenyon Martin trying to fight through the screen. Knocks over Heinrich this time. There's payback. Knocking over his fellow senior. And they will mop up a little moisture on this slippery court. There were many emerging storylines going into this game. We did not think Wax would be among them. <laughs> you know, an interesting storyline, really, even though this is senior night, a great season has been turned in by a freshman. Wow! Kenyon Martin gets another block. That's Trap Robertson. 
State nearly picks out the pass. Heinrich's pass is picked off by Kenyon Martin, and a blocking foul will be called on Latimer. St. Louis is just having a tough time in the half-court offense, and here's a shot Heinrich thought he had, and Kenyon could have snatched that one down like a rebound, and now you see him in the passing lane, picking the pass off and trying to get into the fast break. He does it all on the defensive end. But how about Kenny Satterfield? He becomes the first freshman to lead his team in scoring. Assists. In, I'm sorry, in assists since the 1974-75 season when Steve Collier led the team at 3.3 as a freshman. So, outstanding campaign turned in by Kenny Satterfield. Kenny at 5.4 assists. That's number one in Conference USA. And he's only been starting for 10 games. Fletch misses from three-point range. Jeffers with a rebound. Six minutes to go. Cincinnati up by 40. Jeffers for three. Pete Michael has the rebound. Pete with 21 points and four boards in this game. Kenyon Martin with 20 points and eight boards. Make it 23 points as Kenyon Martin hits a three-pointer at home for the first time in his UC career. Ha <laughs> ha, he points over here. He's pointing at you, Dan. He said he couldn't stroke it. He was one for nine in his career. Now he's two for 10. He raised up on that one like he belongs out there on the perimeter. No, the NBA scouts are drooling that he's showing more and more range. Sure is. Latimer for three. Big Australian misses. Redden has the rebound for St. Louis. You know, it's becoming apparent there's not too many things Kenya Martin can't do out there on the court, and he's only going to get better. Out of bounds off Cincinnati. Let's take another look at that trade by Kenyon. Well, Kenyon did not hesitate right into the shooting motion. Bang. Kenyon Martin walking off the floor and getting a standing ovation here at the shoe. 23 points, eight rebounds. And officially have him for two blocks. We will double check that. All right, I got him for three. He got one in the first half early in the game, and we've seen him get two here in the second. There is his mom and his fiance. The student section chanting Canyon, Canyon. No one has returned to his or her seat yet. Michael with great hustle to steal it from Love. Well, with the performance that Pete Michael has turned in this evening, we expect to see him get a huge ovation also. Four fifteen left. Satterfield feeding Tate. The basket will not count. Tate will go to the line. Dermar Johnson coming in. Pete Michael will head to the bench next. And everybody stands up again. Well, Cincinnati fans, they know how important Pete Michael is to this basketball team, and it's nice to see him have an outstanding performance as he gets five steals and three blocks to go along with his 21 points and four rebounds. So it's nice to see Pete Michael get back on track. The crowd responding to Pete Michael as he stands in front of the bench and waves his arms. Love gets the three-pointer. Justin Love has been very quiet overall in this ball game. He's made three baskets. They've all been threes for nine points, about half of his 18-per-game average. 
333 left. The difference is 40. And a foul away from the ball on Justin Love, holding Steve Logan. Jermaine Tate is next. Yesterday, how he hopes to be remembered, Jermaine Tate said, as part of a great team. Well, he certainly is that. Starter for most of the past two seasons. And an unsung hero on a team that hopes to go a long way in March Madness. We have a timeout with 328 left. Cincinnati 77, St. Louis 35. As a coach, competition is what we live for. But in the game of life, one opponent we don't want to face is cancer. That's why I've joined Provident Bank and the National Association of Basketball Coaches to execute a game plan in the fight against cancer. We've joined the team of Coaches versus Cancer, and through the American Cancer Society, we will work to offer hope and progress to overcome this deadly disease. With each free throw that is made this year, Provident Bank will donate $50 to the Bob Huggins Foundation in support of this program. Together, we can battle this disease and beat life's toughest. It's been an emotional night at the shoe. Cincinnati beating up on St. Louis, 77-35. Bob Huggins going without the tie tonight, perhaps because he knew he'd be doing a lot of hugging and crying. He might have uh, had some stains by the end of this game. Jermaine Tate getting the big bear hug. Ryan Fletcher will be the fourth and final senior to get a big ovation when he leaves the court shortly. Perhaps he can have one last great highlight here at the shoe before he heads to the bench. Here's how bad St. Louis has struggled offensively. They only have 35 points. Cincinnati had 41 at halftime. Heinrich trying to show off his dribbling ability. That didn't work so well, but St. Louis does wind up with a bucket as Justin Love reaches double figures at 11 points. 2.45 left. Cincinnati. About to win its 28th game and move back to number one in the country with Stanford losing to UCLA. Fletch to the hoop. Offensive foul called on Ryan Fletcher. That'll be his fourth. And that will be it for Fletch as B.J. Grove comes into the ball game. One more huge ovation for senior Ryan Fletcher. <laughs> Let, let's try to go out with a bang. Instead, he went out with a thud as he, as he bowled over a few people in the paint, but he still gets the huge ovation. Chris Brown inside. Hits the bottom of the rim, and B.J. Grove gets the rebound for UC. Logan to the hoop, lays it up, and in. Nine points for Logan. who's just checked into the game, gets into the scoring book. Senior from Texas, averaging about one and a half points a game. B.J. Grove shoots. Donald Little wins the battle for the rebound. The students are chanting, we're number one. They've seen the Stanford score. B.J. Grove shoots and misses again. Love with the rebound for St. Louis. Braun gets the offensive rebound after the Latimer miss. Simmons shoots. That's no good. Brown with another board. Logan knocked it out of his hands. And a foul will be called on Cincinnati. As we look at our Gentry game summary, second half shooting. Been about twice as good for Cincinnati as it's been for St. Louis. Seniors have combined for 51. Kenyon Martin and Pete Michael both topping 20 points in this game. Well, the explosion in the shooting in the second half for the Bearcats is really what ballooned the lead as they found their touch. <laughs> Steve 
Steve Logan gets a nice hand as he heads to the bench. Walk on Chris Tafflinger checks into the game. Latimer makes both free throws. St. Louis has 41 points in this game. The fewest scored against the Bearcats this season is 46 by Boise State. Little draws the foul from Latimer. Our Dodge player who made the difference tonight, one of the seniors, Pete Michael, who finished with 21 points, four boards, and five steals. Well, Pete Michael got an outstanding performance out of him this evening, the Bearcats did, and it's nice to see heading into the conference tournament and the NCAA tournament. Little's free throw is no good. Logan is coming back in. Dermar Johnson will get a round of applause as he heads to the bench. Of course, UC fans are certainly hoping this is not his last game at the shoe. In fact, the students are chanting one more year. Why not make it three? For freshman Dermar Johnson. Absolutely. What's the hurry? Less than a minute to go in the game. Don't forget our video tribute to Kenyon Martin coming up shortly. Beautiful piece put together by our director and executive producer, David Ashbrock. Slam dunk by Kenny Satterfield as Fletch looks up to see that the Bearcats have doubled St. Louis's score. It's 82 to 41. Satterfield with eight points in the game. Now the long outlet, knocked out of bounds by Ferguson with 14.7 seconds to go. Well, it has certainly been our great pleasure to broadcast this basketball team this season. An honor to watch Kenyon Martin in his senior year. The great freshman years put together by Satterfield and Dermar Johnson. Certainly terrific performances by Pete Michael, Ryan Fletcher, and that basket by Chris Tapplinger. That'll do it as Cincinnati completes a perfect Conference USA regular season. Outstanding basketball team, Dan. I, 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 I can't say enough about the, what this team has done this year. And hopefully they can conclude a great season with a national championship. Well, it's certainly been a great pleasure again working with you this year. Kudos to our outstanding staff man, Mark Wagner, the best in the business. And thanks to all of you who have enjoyed Bearcat basketball on Fox 19 this season. Up next on Fox 19, an abbreviated edition of Cops. Then be sure to watch the 10 o'clock news with Regina Carswell and Jonathan Freed, along with Andy Trinan with complete highlights of the day in sports. The postseason begins Thursday in Memphis. We'll have that game for you beginning at noon, and we'll be with the Bearcats every step of the way throughout March Madness with complete reports on 19 News. We would like to express our sincere appreciation to the UC players, coaches, and sports information staff for their help and cooperation throughout the season and our best wishes for great success in March Madness. As we leave you tonight, we present a final tribute to the Grand Canyon. Let's cherish the memories of Bearcat Senior and Player of the Year, Kenyon Martin. Kenyon Martin with a steal from Booker. And the breakaway. The big man has 30. Beat Michael for three. Kenyon Martin throws it down. Oh, my Lord. Martin with a steal. Look out as he throws it down. Throws it up for Kenyon who slams it home. And the alley-oop to Kenyon Martin is thrown down for a dunk. The alley-oop to Kenyon for another dunk. The alley-oop and the reverse slam by Kenyon Martin. Ken Martin in the paint. Over Bowman. Scores. The great beat by Horton. Kenyon Martin with a sensational spin move and slam. Nice speed. Kenyon throws it down and he's fouled.
Virginia shoots and scores. He'll go to the line to try for a three-point play. Coach Bob Huggins. Some people think I don't show any emotion, but that's not true. Bob's definitely got his game face on tonight. I just prefer to save it for game time. Coach Huggins does not look happy. So if you want to see me get in touch with my inner feelings, Bob Huggins is furious. It's this season's hoop action on Fox 19, home of the Bearcats. Heck, you might even see me get excited.